be ready to cope. Panels here this evening. I know we're still a couple of weeks out, but at least we have a bit of light at the end of the tunnel by the end of April. We'll be back, uh, back coaching, hopefully in our small pods or and with our kids. So, look, a bit of, bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So, just remind you guys, Dan's going to record and has started recording here at the minute. So, again, this will be live again. So, maybe if the other coaches. Thank you. Other coaches who are involved with you, if we can send it on to them. And again, again just last time, guys, remind us just about the mics and stuff, just to stop the stop the iron else. So we get it going, guys. So be ready to coach for around the 13. So again, guys, we're going to be looking at a few areas here tonight. So topics receiving, guys. We're going to look just really quickly through this, and then at the end of the thing, guys, we'll open. It for a few questions so when we're doing questions guys I want you to raise your hand so there's a, an option here to raise your hand and then we get three years and you just on mic yourself ask the question and then we'll answer you as best we can so if it's a really tough question I'll hand this over to Dan and it's an easy question I'll, I'll hope you'll take it please uh, so just topics for this evening guys so we're going to go through really quickly through our idea and our step methods so again just how we coach and then how we change stuff up We'll talk a little bit about us, the coaches, and then we're just going to look at our game-based coaching. A little touch on athletic development. Again, we're at that age group where, as we're getting older, uh, stronger, and they're starting to grow, we'll just have a little touch on that and how we incorporate that into our session. And then we'll really quickly just go over resources that are available to us. So... Our idea method, okay, so coaching a skill or a drill. So again, we can use this primary use, for a lot of us were done it in foundation. So again, our idea method, and then we use it also for drills and activities as well. So simple enough, I, I we introduce the skill, the drill. D, we demonstrate the skill or the drill. E, explain it. Maybe get an X, uh, get a demonstration, uh, as we were just saying before, demonstrate, demonstrating it, and then getting the players to execute it. And then finally, attend. Our most important thing when we're coaching guys to spot and fix. Okay, so when we're coaching guys, whether it's games, drills, we're keeping an eye out, we're moving around, and we're spotting and fixing. Okay, so again, guys, this is going to be very important when we come back, come back onto the field at the end of April. Why am I saying that? I suppose just feedback from schools. We've been in schools already, talking to teachers, and probably just things we've noticed that kids have gone backwards. Okay, so you're not going to get the same. 13 year old who was maybe a very good footballer before this they're not going to come back the same player as they were okay they're going to be rusty they're going to be missing missing that maybe a little bit of the edge as we call it so again getting back to spotting and fixing and really keeping attention uh, attending the kids will be very important okay so changing an activity okay so our step method so again, this is how we change our drills, change our activities, change our games. Okay, so again, S is for the space we use. T is the time, the task we use. E is the equipment we use. So again, make, maybe if we want to make a little, add a little bit of fun to the session, adding in tennis balls, rugby ball, different items like that. Again, using our ladders, hurdles, and stuff like that. And then finally, P for your player. So as we explain in the next slide, how we change up our players. So our idea, man, just going to break it down here a little bit more. So our, when we introduce, we're introducing the what, the when, and the why. Okay, so the what is maybe the skill or the drill or activity we're doing or the game we're doing. The when, so maybe if we're coaching a skill, you're explaining when we do it, okay. And if we're doing a drill, we're explaining when this might be used in a game. So it could be like a little set play routine or it could be we're attacking. So this is when we're doing, this is why we're doing this drill as, as the next point says, on to the why. Okay, so why are we doing the skill? Why are we doing the drill? Why are we doing this activity? So again, that's when we introduce. <coughs> so again, we keep moving on. And so when we demonstrate, guys, several times, Let's do different angles, and again, one to two, three coaching points. So keep it nice, short, sweet. And again, probably just one thing myself, Dan, and the other lads have noticed being back in schools is 
keep it short and sweet, keep them moving, keep them active, okay? Because they've got to the stage where maybe the attention span isn't as good as it was. You'd see it a lot in the schools, the teachers even say that their attention span has just gone out the window, especially with the months off and the weeks off. Okay, so when we get back on the field, guys, keep your coaching points really quick, really simple, and then really quick demonstrations, okay? So again, they explain to execute, okay? So what are the players about to do? Ask questions of the players, do they understand, okay? And then let them at it, okay? So <coughs> again, very important when we do get back to the field, guys, let the kids at it, get into, encourage them now to all bring a football or have a football for every kid there and let get them as many touches, get them doing as much as we can <coughs> when they come back, okay? So when we're doing that, guys, <clears throat> that's our time to attend and we spot and fix, okay? So you have to assess what, what they're doing, okay? So you're keeping a good eye on them, okay? You're encouraging them as well. And then reiterate the coaching points when they're doing it, if they're doing solo and work, okay? So again, they're keeping their head, their eyes over the football, pointing that toe back up and getting the kick back up from, up, their, up into their hands, okay? So, and again, guys, don't be afraid to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching again. So fix mistakes, so bring them maybe if one kid is struggling <clears throat> and maybe he's only getting back into it again, he's done nothing over COVID in terms of he maybe hasn't done any of the homework that's been sent out in terms of maybe the, as a club he's been sending out club, uh, skills challenges and stuff. Look, them kids have, there is kids out there not doing that stuff. So they're the kids that are probably going to need that extra little bit of help to help them fix mistakes and get them back into, back into what they were doing before. And then guys, very important, praise good technique. Okay, so... Again, yeah, guys, that's our coaching the skills. So that's our idea method. So just really wanted to touch on it really again, really quickly. Our what, when, why. And then our demonstrate several times, different angles, few coaching points. And then explain, execute what the players are doing and then let them out. Okay, so again, guys, if you maybe have planned an activity for 10 minutes, one to two minutes max talking, and then the kids are at it for the eight minutes. And then the most important thing, as I said before, going around the attending, and the spotting and fixing, okay? So we're helping them out as best we can, and then we're praising them, good technique. And then it says, if we have three or four coaches involved, let's do the one-on-one -on -one coaching there as best we can. So just changing the activity, okay? So our space, so again, we, we can make the area bigger, smaller, longer, smaller, okay? So again, guys, we could do an... Uh, we could maybe be doing a four on two in our session where it's just keep ball uh, or just keeping the ball. Again, might find the area might be a bit small and we find they're dropping a lot of ball, a ball and balls aren't going to hand and hand passes aren't going to hand. Don't be afraid. Let's make the area a little bit bigger so the defenders have, defenders maybe have greater time to close down, but the attackers will have more time on the ball. So again, to build that confidence up Again, that's going to be the big thing that we adapt to. When we go back, we're adapting to the situation in terms of if it's a four and two and we're in a tight space, ball's hitting the ground a lot, we're not going to the attackers, let's make the area a little bit bigger. Or it could be the other way around where the defenders maybe aren't getting their hands in or not getting the shadow in or not intercepting the ball enough where then you can make it a little bit smaller. So time, task. Okay, so again, we talk about the duration, the time of the ball. So again, might have a limit of, we'll keep to a four on two drill here for a second. So might have a limit of three seconds on the ball and then change what uh, you're asking them to do. Okay, so numbers of scores, touches, number, no touches, number of passes, opposite foot only. So again, we're, we're staying on a four on two. So if you get five passes in a row, they might get a score. Okay, if the defenders get the ball off them, the defenders get three points, so that's encouraging the attackers maybe to get more more hand passes and not give the ball away. Touches, so if the attackers maybe need to take a touch, do we allow it? Or no touches, okay, so no touches of the ball here, guys. Let's keep moving the ball, moving the ball. And then number of passes, so as we we're saying, probably relates to our scores. If we get five passes in a row, we get a score. If we get ten passes in a row, we double our points. So you might say that's two, so we obviously get four points there. So it's put pressure on both. And then opposite foot. So obviously opposite side, if we're doing a hand pass and we can use opposite hand only. So again, challenge the kids, as we said, and make sure they're getting lots of touches 
on both sides and then don't be afraid to spend maybe a little bit longer on the opposite side especially at this age group as they get older and older it becomes hard and harder so we can nail that at 11 12 13 especially the opposite side becomes a lot easier as they get older so again our equipment so again don't be afraid to change things up tennis ball reaction balls ladders hurdles tackle bags so again just relate to our four on two little drill we're doing so again add in tennis balls where it's just be throwing the tennis balls and it becomes a lot harder for it to catch and then it becomes a lot harder say for the defenders to intercept because it's a smaller ball reaction balls so again them little balls that bounce in different directions or if you have the bigger reaction ball add, don't be afraid to add them in again a little bit awkward, more awkward to ca catch and then if it bounces on the ground it's obviously going to bounce a different direction so the kids have to react to that and then our ladders hold and tackle bags add them in if we're doing maybe little warm-up stuff and again probably relating back to our abcs so again probably a key point to bring up as well guys don't be afraid to put in the ladders hurdles tackle bags when we're going back and training because one a little bit of fun something different for them and two we're probably going to have to reiterate the abcs and our running jump and throw and so our rgats as well so our abcs are agility balance and coordination again as i was saying before some kids yes Will it be an outside kicking ball with brothers or sisters or against the wall or maybe the friend next door or the neighbour next door? But you're going to have the kids who have not done anything since the last time they trained or maybe a small 20 minutes to get for break. So again, don't be afraid to go, go back over that stuff with them. So then our last thing then is our players. So again, don't be afraid, as we were just saying, change numbers of players have an extra defender or attacker and then you can change from 3v3 to 4v2 5v1 so again going back to the drill i was just using we're using a 4v2 drill so how do we change that up so maybe if the attackers aren't getting enough passes in or the defenders keep intercepting them or maybe it's just a bit of rustiness don't be afraid to bring it up to five attackers v1 defender so it's given the attackers more chance of retaining the ball and then eventually guys what we would really encourage, and we'll t touch on a wee bit when we go on to the games based coaching, bringing into 3v3, so lots of touches, but again, a lot more challenging than the 4v2 and the 5v1. So again, that's how we challenge the players, that's how we change up the stuff. And then just going over that again really quickly. So again, our step method, so it's changing an activity, drill, or a game. Okay, so again, activity, drill, same thing, okay. So our space, making the area bigger or smaller. Our time task, so again, to give them little tasks to do in the activity or the game. And then time, so again, the time the player has in the ball or we're working for 30 seconds here, how many hand pass can we get in 30 seconds? Little 10 second break, going again for 30 seconds, can we beat that? And then our equipment, so again, using our tennis balls, reaction balls, adding in our ladle, hurdle, or tackle bags, okay? And then finally, our players. So again, don't be afraid to do the small side games where it could be three on three on one little pitch. It could be two on two on the next pitch, or it could be four v four on the next pitch. Do not be afraid to do that, okay? So again, it encourages the players to get lots of touches, get lots of plays of the ball. And then again, do not be afraid to go do a four v two or five v one to build confidence, maybe into attackers or maybe to keep ball, okay? Again, don't worry about the two defenders or the one defender. They're going to be doing plenty of work in that, in that time slot where they're going to be getting used to trying to intercept the ball or trying to stop the ball. So again, probably just relating why I'm talking about intercepting and blocking the ball. Look, guys, we know ourselves when we go back, we're going to be encouraged to do uh, socially distanced training. We can still do our 4 feet 2s and our 5 feet ones where we just... All you have to do is cut out the tackle and then the kids, all, all you're encouraged to do is intercept what passes or block a pass. So again, they're not touching each other or, or, or not, not, we're not, they're not touching another player whereas in terms of they're still working on the defensive side stuff. So again guys, us as the coaches, okay, so just a few little points, okay, again. Going back to our player part with our player part with presentations we've done before. Again, 
get to know your get to know your players individually. So as we're going on here, guys, the kids are starting to get to the awkward age where they're getting into their teenage years. So they probably become a little bit more isolated, or maybe the cliques and friends are starting to change. Where you might have two or three lads who are very pally together, and then you maybe have two or three lads who aren't just as pally with each other. So again, but get to know your players individually, get to see. Get, get, sorry, getting to know the player. So again, guys, a very important point here, well-organized planned sessions, okay? So again, as we're saying, at that age now where if the session isn't planned or it's rushed and the kids buy into that, okay? So if you're rocking up, okay, again, I know, I know, I know it is hard for some people, okay? But if you're rocking up just at 7 o'clock for training on the dot, and the kids are maybe are there ten to, and then you're walking around, putting cones down, and then you're like spend another five minutes or what we do after this drill, and then you're spending another two or three minutes putting down more cones. Come quarter past, the kids are bored. They've realised, oh, this session's not planned, and then it becomes a little bit boring for them, and then they're late starting, late getting home. So, as best we can, try to be there to ten minutes before training. Have maybe even if it's just even having the first two or three drills set up. Once they're set up and it's bang, 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 it maybe allows the other coach to help us, or it allows you, you the coach, maybe you might be the main coach, to go set, uh, set up maybe the last couple of games and stuff. So again, be organised, plan. Don't have to have an A4 sheet done out to last in terms of the drawing or that. A few notes. Drill one, going to this. Drill two, okay, we gave five feet four. And then drill three could be, we're going to work on a solo and a speed. And then, so game space coaching, guys. Okay, so probably hearing this term a lot, and we've probably touched on it before, which is as well, guys. So, what we mean by game space coaching, and we'll, again, I'll touch on a little bit more detail, is means that we, we're coaching through the games, okay? So, we're doing a lot more of our coaching, say, if we're working on solo in a, in a game, that we'll give them for maybe good technique solos, maybe doing a dummy solo pass, something, so we're coaching through little stuff like that. Again, I'll touch on a little bit more later on. So again, on our turn, guys, let's focus on the basics, okay? So as, as we said before, you're going to have kids who have been keeping up the basics, they're, they're good at going out, kicking against the wall or they're good at engaging with maybe a brother or sister or your parents or, or you as the coach so you're going to have them they're not going to be too bad but then you're going to have the kids who haven't touched the ball haven't moved done any last three to four months so again first session or two let's focus on the basics do your small side games where everyone's getting touches everyone's getting familiar and then make sure it's not the fun, especially the first couple of sessions. So, again, for the week, okay, so again, set targets when they're at that age, they're aware, hopefully they'll have their eye on academy squads, or they have their eye on, they want to be in senior squads in the future, and they're starting to, start, starting to get to that age where they're starting to think about all that stuff. So don't be afraid to set that in. So, it could be something simple as, uh, we'll just say, Dan, for example, Dan's not great in the week, but Dan, I want you to go past two evenings a week and I want you to hit 20 balls with your left foot the wall and then I just want you to pass that and twice a week and then hopefully when you come back the next day we'll see how, how much you've improved. So again, little challenges like that. So again, try to have at least one ball for every two players. So again, if we have 20 players, we want a minimum of 10 11 footballs there again because that means then when we're doing our skill work and we're working in pairs and our skills we're getting loads of touches we're getting more familiar with the ball and then the solid player we become and then if we can or I do see some clubs do it when clubs register or they sign up for the year every player gets football so encourage kids if they want especially especially with COVID don't be afraid to ask them to bring the football up the train and they keep that football for the whole train and where we're just working on skill work and we want to improve as footballers. So don't be 
we put them that, and then you can have your 10 footballs that your kids from one into the drills and games activities that we use them 10 footballs. So, player development takes priority over it. Okay, so, so again, guys, we hear it a lot out there, and we probably see it in our own club in terms of coaching to winning. Okay, look, guys, it's very important that we get ready for the future. Okay, so we're getting them ready for the step up to 15s, we're getting them ready for 17s as we on the 15. And then when they get to 17s, which, yes, winning's great. And look, it probably does, it does add, does add a buzz to it and it does add a bit of excitement to it. But would you rather, as a coach, have five, 10 on the 13 for the club? Whereas maybe I, I, as a coach, I was winning every year uh, and maybe I wasn't the nicest coach. They only had five players to one. Who's the real winner at the end of the day? I'd say the real winner is the coach who had a player going on to represent seniors. So that means then the senior team and then maybe your junior team is in a stronger position to go on and compete at two base trips. So again, guys, player, de player development takes priority over results. So again, we'll touch back to the Belgians, okay, and... Uh, Give a big emphasis on player development, doing loads of small side games, doing loads of loads of touches of football. And as you see, Belgium are probably number one ranked team in the world at soccer, and then Barcelona have been competing for honours last 15, 20 years now. So again, guys, think about how you want. To okay, is it all about the winning, or is it all about keeping my players involved? making my players better footballers and making sure the players really enjoy it. So a game based approach. So and whether that's maybe again we're playing a 10, 10, 10 v 10 game or we're playing a small side game. So again I would encourage guys as many small side games when we're doing our coaching as best we can. Okay, so what I mean by that, I say taking the easy option and playing our 20 players up here this evening, I'm just going to play 10 on 10 at the end. Let's see, can we break that up into maybe 5 v 5 for the first 10 minutes? And then I might break it up even more and do 4 v 4 or I might do a 3 v 3. Great enough. I get to get some loads of touches. Loads of game scenario things happen when we're playing the game, and then in in return, hopefully a lot more fun for the kids. So when we do our games, we're approaching. So again, we just see them play the game or small side game, and then freeze the game. Okay, so let's work on. So we we'll say we're working on our kicking this week. So play your game, and then we're working on our kicking in the game. Okay, so we're going to go through the scale. My dear, that's what we do. Maybe our one or two coaching points. We set them off into a drill. So it's going to be kicking in twos for the first activity. Drill. And then activity two was to keep and squeeze the ball in space. And then three feeds off them for a hand pass and we reset. And then again, if we want, we could do a game where it could be using half the pitch. And it could be a small side game or it's Five passes in a row, we get it, we get a point for a good kick pass in over 20 meters. And then finally, that's when you get back into play our game or play our small side games again. Again, just a wee example here. So a hand pass. So again, we've game game based activity. So again, might be don't worry about not seeing it. I'll just explain it. So we have a hand pass. We keep ball. Okay, so this is our first activity games based approach and then we're breaking down the skill so now we're going to go into hand pass and pairs so we're going to walk on our technique and we're going to move the drill on a wee bit so we're going to make it a little bit harder move now sorry let's uh, so we're going to zigzag
and now we have to pass in front of you. And then we're going back into a game based activity. Okay, so again, uh, tap the ball. I sound very bad. Uh, just give me one second. Dan, you just unmute yourself there. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, Chris, it's just, it sounds like it's in and out um, a wee like bit. So I, I don't, if you're on the headphones, okay. just make sure they're plugged in fully. Yeah, that's perfect. I'll, uh, I'll just go through that. <coughs> You're gone there now, lad, altogether. Uh, just give me one second. Can you hear me now, Dan? Yeah, that seems to be better. Okay, on as best we can here. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry about that. So I'll just I'll go over that really quickly again. So as we can see in the left hand corner, okay, so we worked on our activity, our game based activity. So again, 4v2 replicating, and we went into a pair of hand passing. So again, again, simple activity over and back. Working on maybe the hand right hand, and then we can work on our distance as well. There, and then we went into a different. So now we're on the move, zigzagging over. So again, get using our coach. Maybe again, don't be afraid to print them off. On the G D A activity. Yeah. Yeah. So again, gives you your, your coaching points to do. Yes. I hear you. Sorry, guys. Uh, Chris? Coverage is very bad, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I just. Uh, Chris, Dan here. <clears throat> Um, I can finish the slides if you want. If the sound is a wee bit better on mine, if yeah. you can hear it. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. All right, there. If you want me to finish off the slides and you do the, the, the third third. Yeah, I think we're nearly done anyway, Dan. So. Oh. Oh. You hear me? Now? I can hear you. Now. Just give me a sec. Just talk again, there, Chris, for a sec. Well, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's in and out um, on the sound. It's breaking up. So, would I want me to finish through it if my if the sound is better? I might say I think it's breaking up a lot for everyone on your microphone there. Sorry, Dan. Can you hear it there now? Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just I just went onto the phone there. So. Yeah, guys. Uh, okay. I hope you can hear me better there now. What do you think, Dan? A lot better there now. A lot better. A lot better. Okay. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, the joys of technology and. Uh, Apologies for all that. Uh, so, guys, we're actually nearly finished. Uh, I've only one or two more slides to do. So, again, we allow for questions in one or two minutes. So, we're just tapping on electric development, guys. Okay, so maybe this is where we start to introduce the movements and the warm up. So, again, maybe our squat, our RDL, our single leg RDL, uh, our lunges, our jumping, and different stuff with that. Okay, so. Again, we'll send through documents with all that stuff on it. And again, we're aiming for eight, 10 reps throughout the exercises. 
Again, no need for an SSC degree. Okay, we're we starting to introduce the exercises. Start to get them thinking about it, okay. Maybe why we do a squat, uh, why we do a lunge and stuff like that, okay. So again, we're preparing the body for the demands of the game as we get older. So last slide here, guys. Okay, so in practice, let's coach the skill through games. Don't be afraid of trial and error. So as we were saying, don't be afraid to try your 3v3s or 2v2s, your 4v1s and stuff like that. Okay, so let's try them. If they work, brilliant. Okay, if they don't work, don't worry about it. Let's move on to the next drill and move on to the next activities. Okay, and if everything does fail, guys, the big, the big saver is let's play the game. Okay, so maybe you might have 10, you might have 10 at training, so or 20 at training, so don't be afraid to do a 10 v 10. But again, if we can, guys, let's play as many small side games as we can. Get them loads of touches of the ball. So again, we're talking about our 2v2s, our 3v3s, our 4v4s, and then our 5v5s. Okay, so use as many of them small side games and coach the skills and drills through that. Uh, use the skill cards to coach the skills, guys. Okay, so using your idea. So again, don't be afraid to have them in hand, okay, or have them up at the club field in terms of if we can print them off, get them into a folder or something that they're there. That look, maybe you have look something come up at work or or late getting up. Don't be afraid to pull out the skill card, walk down and train, and we can set up our drills using it. Okay, and then using our step method to modify your drill activity or your game. Okay, so. Again, guys, we could be spending five minutes at this drill. Now, don't be afraid to change it up for the next five minutes by using either your space, your time, your tasks, equipment, or your players. Okay, guys, so thanks for that, and apologies just for that last bit, uh, the sound. Uh, so, guys, if you have any questions, if you just want to raise your hand, and we'll just give you a call, and then just unmute yourself, and we'll answer you as best we can. Uh, Kyle, you're first there, so if you just want to mute yourself, you can ask. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, yeah, just wondering how long do you think they need to do this? Sorry, Kyle, that just broke up there a wee bit, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Just wondering how just long wondering do you think they need to do Sorry, I missed that. It broke up again. <laughs> sorry, do you know how long the year will be for the under-13s? Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, Dan, you might just be able to answer that. I think you were kind of meeting last, last night, were you? Yeah, um, hopefully it'll be kind of can hear me Kyle now when I'm talking um, it's been I suppose with the news last night about football getting back at towards the end of the month I'd, the way it's looking or I'd envisage is that it will probably be at least four weeks of training of clubs on their own before there'll be any sort of of games or activity and then the hope would be that at that stage there'll be a full games program provided for each team and that it'll be a pretty much a game every week until the end of September, October. Obviously, maybe an odd week here and there, it, there won't be fixtures, but the hope would that each each team would have between 10 to 14 fixtures from, from when we get going until until toward the end of the season. But I suppose it's up to the youth board then to once they once they get kind of dates so we can start games the 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 fixture details now will be provided. So look I suppose the hope would be twelve to fourteen games for each team. Get lads back playing football and get as many games as possible under the belt. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, hundred percent. Thanks very much. Cheers uh, guys any more questions? If you even just want to unmute yourself there, mask away. Yeah, John, by the way. Yeah, Chris, uh, whereabouts should our under 13s be? Would you have a kind of a, a standard what they should be doing, kicking to the left, kicking to the right, hand passing left and right? Would you have a kind of a, a level that they should roughly be at at that age? 
Uh, I think it all kind of depends. It depends on the group. So again, the look each group of thirteen is always going to be different. Again, I suppose look at the level we probably expect them to be at now. I don't think it's going to be the level. It's a, they're not going to be at that level now, especially after missing so much football last year and then missing so much after missing probably probably nearly two months of training now at this stage. So again, don't, don't be afraid to do maybe a little skill assessment at the start, see where they are, and then look at build towards build towards something in terms of each player has to improve on their skills by two or three points. Uh, again, look, no real benchmark, as we said. You're hoping that they can maybe kick up both feet or they can use both hands. And then, look, if you have them at the end on the 13s, this is the last year of 13s, that they can kick confidently with both feet and they can use both hands. I'd, I'd, I'd say that's a successful year in terms of they're able to do that now. So I hope that answers your question, John. It does, yeah. And just on that, do you have a skills assessment cards uh, there? Do you have those? There is. There is. Chris, I'll take a call, John. Yeah, go on ahead, John. Yeah, sorry. Dan here. Uh, yeah, John, hopefully this, I can answer your question on it. That, um, we're hoping to set up, send out a form. You guys should receive it tomorrow or the next day. It's it's supposed to get contact details that and to put all of our under 13 coaches into a group, a WhatsApp group that we can send out material and information direct to you guys in terms of training sessions and what should be covered or what you could be looking to cover with the kids at that age. And then also, in addition to that, I suppose there'll be some people on the call might be aware and some might not that. In the last, last couple of weeks, every club has a coach in contact with us. So someone in the club would have, it may be someone that's on this call, maybe not, uh, would have received uh, an, uh, a SWOT analysis for their club to fill out. And I suppose about 30% of clubs that have come back so far with it filled out will then receive a coaching aid for the year that's particularly for your club around the strengths and weaknesses and, and whatever and that is included a guide for what should be included or for what should be covered at each age group from nursery all the way up to under 17 so any anyone any club that hasn't come back to us yet will be receiving it again um this week or possibly received it today to, to cover with and all of that information is provided in it in in the document okay so hopefully john that's that's a bit more info on that for you yeah that's great thanks lads sure john uh dara yeah chris just the uh i know you mentioned the athletic development there and 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 yeah, and you only have you only have you only have you got have you got um videos there of you know the squat and um, techniques for running and stuff because I think it is a very important age that they can start developing all that and the whole technique is so important. I mean, we see kids now coming at 18, 19, and they can't squat and they can't lunge. And I suppose just to, to I know you did videos of that earlier. Are they available for for clubs and that? Just a, a, an athletic development kind of tool that we could use. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, uh, kind of we were doing stuff uh, with kind of for clubs, kind of for, say, for the 13s up to 15s there a couple of weeks ago, just when lockdown was on. And we kind of went through coaching points. So I think Aiden at the minute is just kind of cropping them videos. And again, we have the coaching points on the videos and attach it up with all the coaching points. But yes, we'll hope you have that available in the next couple of weeks for the clubs. Lovely. And, and just quick, it, it, c could you add running technique into that, or would that be just happen just? Yeah, so uh, it's probably something we probably do have to look at. Uh, now we haven't looked at it yet, so it's I'm definitely something sure. we can't be looking at. So look at just no. at the minute, I wouldn't say we'll probably have that ready to go, but it's probably just something we need to either tap into with Andre and maybe get something going for that as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Dara. Uh, Sean Smith, you want to go ahead? Chris, can you hear me? Yeah, here you are, Sean. All right, perfect. No, um, just, just I think it was Dara who was on there, um, before me there, and he probably uh, asked a, a very 
some of the something similar question, and um, because it's probably more important now the the athlete development than ever. Because as you mentioned in your presentation, there we're going to have a lot of players who have been uh, active, and then you have other players who may not be coming out of lockdown. So um, I definitely agree with Dan's idea of the WhatsApp. Really, really would be uh, a great idea that maybe to share some stuff, particularly around the the athlete development, because I know it's it's one area that a lot of clubs are interested, are but maybe not sure, but not maybe sure how to do it. Um, so, so maybe if you could share some of that stuff, Chris, around the athlete development um, piece, because um, there's two sides. The one is doing it, and two is that don't you over, don't overdo it. It's probably the other side of it too uh, that we have to be careful. We're not all we're not all strength and conditioning coaches either, you know. Yeah, Chris, yeah. I can take take that one if you want. Want to um, yeah, look, there's guys, there we have eight um, sessions, I suppose, up on our YouTube channel now, eight athletic development sessions, starting, I suppose, with the basics from mobility and warm-up, working towards the goals in to cover the key exercise or key components over the next couple of weeks. Then along with that, in, our, in the document that I mentioned there a couple of minutes ago, it also includes um, our athletic development, strength and condition, or whatever whatever we like to call it, and a full breakdown and links to all all the videos of our eight eight sessions that have been done so far and designed by Andre. So, look, um, hopefully, I know some clubs the contact has been sending on that information to the coaches, and some clubs they possibly haven't. So, I suppose we get a message out to our contacts tomorrow with links to to all the videos and all the information surrounding athletic de development. So hopefully it will then be passed on to you guys that it should cover a lot of the basics and a lot of, I suppose, what will help return to play and intervention and that kind of stuff in the next couple of weeks, okay? Perfect, Dan. Yeah, Thanks. So Dan, just, yeah, so probably just another point I'll just show you quickly here. So I'll just find it here first. Uh, hopefully you can all see the screen again. Yeah, so there's the screen coming up again, guys. So again, really quickly, uh, as Dan was just saying, we have a YouTube channel. So again, all that stuff is up there. So as you can see there, our coaching and games. Uh, so hopefully that's going to come up quick enough for us. And again, we have the youth development stuff. So again, if you just click your playlist or your video, sorry, all the videos and sessions we've done. So as you can see there, there's youth development session eight, seven, the whole way down. And I think our warm up is in it as well. So again, in them sessions, it goes through the kind of warm up. So that's kind of our main prepping the body, getting the body ready for the sessions. And there's loads of different videos up there from the, them them work from home sessions. And then I think also then Aiden's breaking down down them uh, activities. It's into one off clips that we'll be able to send on. Okay, so again, there is a work from home program there as well. Uh, it's kind of stuff that was sent out maybe to the older groups, but there's definitely activities and stuff you can take from that and show it to the kids or show it to maybe your 13s as well. So, uh, and then as well, we've other stuff here on OneDrive, we'll be sharing this, which is as well. And then there's actually, we all know our creativity plan, hopefully by now. So, again, great resource for loads of drills and stuff. So, again, just backing up your point there, Dan and Sean. So, again, you want to start introducing them to the athletic development or into the movements, probably try to get to uh, send them over some of them videos to get them watching and get them learning. Thanks, Chris. Okay, uh, so guys, any more questions? If not, we'll leave it at that. I suppose, guys, I just hit on the point again, and um, possibly you may be unsure of who the contact for us is within the club so if you're unsure that if you want to send over me or chris or any of us an email and we can let you know who the person is that that has been dedicated from your club to receive the information and in some cases they may not be passing it on but we'd hope that most of them are again hopefully tomorrow we will start or get the details you should hopefully get a message to, uh, or a form to fill out that will get you into a whatsapp group and then all the information can be provided through the whatsapp group direct to you guys 
instead of it being passed to someone and passed to you then a second time, we can send it first hand straight to you directly. So then we're de dealing with you guys all the time with the exact information, hopefully, that we're trying to get out. So look, hopefully that will be sorted now in the next, the form will get to you tomorrow and be sorted by next week that you will be the contact then for every bit of material for under 13s or that age group that will be sent out to, okay? Thanks very much as well for logging on this evening. It's great. It's great to hear so much interaction and engagement. It's it's great to see. Okay, guys. So I don't think there's anyone else with any more questions. So hope guys will leave it that. It's just Dan said, thanks very much for coming on. I think you can see the chat box. I just left my email there if anybody wants to ask any questions or Again, looking for material but again Dan was saying we'll be sending all over to his tomorrow so thanks very much and all the best for the future guys cheers lad thank you thanks, thank, lad. You. thank you very much